Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. I am so excited about today's video. We're gonna be talking about how you can help your foster or adopted child adjust to their new life, and I'm really excited about that. So, hello everyone, my name is Winter, and I am a mom of four amazing children. I have three boys and a little girl, all adopted from the foster care system. So, two sibling groups, so we have Augustine and Nay, and they are the first sibling group, and then we have a second sibling group of Genesis and Gabe, and they are amazing. We've been doing this for about six, seven years now, seven years, and it's been awesome. The boys have lived with us for six years, and they were adopted two years after they moved in, and then Jenny and Gabe, they have lived with us for two years, and they were adopted a year after they moved in. So we have a whole bunch of different scenarios here. We have a lot of experiences with helping children adjust to a whole new life, and to see what that can look like years down the road, it's, it's so rewarding, and it's so exciting to help a child adjust to a new way of life with you as their parents. And it is a hard adjustment, don't get me wrong, but so let's just jump into some of these tips here. The first tip that I wanna to talk to you about is consistency. And I know that all of you are like, okay, I know this one. Like you heard this like a million times. It's like parenting 101, right? Consistency, but truly consistency is huge for kids that are in care and kids that have been adopted. Um, doing the same thing literally every day. I've always said this before and it's never happened because we love people so much and we like our kids around people, but if we could keep our kids in the house for a whole year after they come into foster care or to be adopted and just do the same thing every single day. I mean, they could go to school, but just do the same exact thing every day. It would be so good for their life, but we don't because we have family and we have friends. So we're always introducing new people to them. And I've always noticed like the more like we're out of routine, we are out of whack. Like we go to the bed at the same time every night. Um, we eat the same meals on a weekly basis. We have tacos, chili, Chinese food. You just kind of rotate the meals over and over and over again. You find the ones they like and then you rotate them and so that they always can like have food and like always can have feel that consistency of like you're gonna be their provider and you're gonna take care of them and it's so important and also like connecting with them every single day it doesn't have to be this long drawn out like I'm gonna play with you kind of thing I, I mean it doesn't have to be like that um, but like you can just like look at them and like talk to them and like figure out how they're doing that day. Just kind of look in their eyes, make sure they're okay every day, each child. I know I have a lot of kids, but I try to do this literally every day. I try to connect with them um, beyond prayer times at night and morning times. I try to do it sometime in the middle of the day. It's very important for them. Um, after school, like it's so important for them to have a routine after school. So our kids have a list of things that they do every day after school before they can watch TV. And it's so good for them. They're never, like with like wandering spirits, you know, <laughs> like they are always like, they know what they're gonna do with their life. So I think consistency is huge and their, their, their minds need that. And they need to know that they can trust you as their mom and dad from here on out um, forever, however long you have them. If they're in foster care, like that's just, it could be temporary, but they still need that consistency even if they're there for a month. Um, but obviously if you're adopting, it's a completely different story. You wanna start that consistency, right? So five, six years from now, like they're thriving and they're, they're doing really well. They know that they can trust you to provide for them and to give them what they need. And kids really do need sleep, so that's why bedtimes are important. <laughs> So the next tip of how to um, help your child adjust when they're adopted or coming into foster care is to have like cultural and biological connections. So if they are a different ethnicity, like you want to make sure than you, you want to make sure that they're getting that culture in their life so that they don't have like an identity crisis later on dealing with their culture. Culture is a huge deal for people, um, believe it or not. Like, it really is, I mean, Ancestry.com, people really care about their heritage and where they came from, like where their grandparents came from. It's like kind of a big deal. It kind of explains who you are and kind of figures out like, why you why you tick the way you tick and like why did your ancestors do that? That's kind of a big deal for, for all humans and not even for like little humans like our kids. And so our kids, our younger two are Native American and our older two are Korean. And we are constantly looking for ways to enrich them with culture and do different things for them. 
are younger too. We give them different things. We, we have like star quilts for them. We read books about it. We talk about Native American culture. We visited Crazy Horse last summer and um, we just try to celebrate it as much as we can. We watch Pocahontas on a regular basis because they like get emotional about it because they are trying to connect with this culture and this people of who they are. And then our older boys, we are so blessed. They are Korean refugees and they have tons of current refugees in our town. We have about a couple thousand and there's all the time there's like cultural days where they celebrate Korean and like they have like taste of Korean where they like serve food and they have their traditional dances and so we always try to go to that and there's also like Korean grocery stores in town where we go to those grocery stores and we purchase things like food that they would like. It's really important for our oldest son who he came into our care when he was 10. It's really important for him. He's 16 now that he has that background and he has connections with um, his people and he actually speaks Korean too so that's why we keep him in public school for instance because in public school there's a lot of Korean kids there and he can speak his language with them so I think it's really super awesome um, actually like kind of like side note later this year we're actually going to take our boys to Thailand where they were born and um, give them that experience we're going to work with orphans there and do a mission trip so that's super cool like I think it's like exciting to like for as a parent too to understand your child but also for um, your child to understand who they are and their identity I know for me it's really important to understand my Scandinavian identity <laughs> it really is it's important to me it's really um, valuable to me to understand like how my grandparents got here from Europe and like different things like that that's it's valuable um, so don't try to don't try to slip that away as like not important it really is an important factor in their life and, and it, it will help them later on in life to understand that and to come to grips with who they are um, like I said, they're going to be raised differently than their culture too because you, um, if you're a different cult, like ethnicity than them, um, that's the way it is. So I have like a whole entire um, video about transracial adoptions in here. I'll just link that below because I could tell you some more stuff about that. So before I ramble, I'll link that below so you guys can get that. And then the other part of that is biological connections. And so that's really important. So if they have cousins or aunts and uncles that you know of, I know international adoptions, this would be completely hard. Like obviously you don't know anything about them for the most part, but like try to keep those relationships alive um, as long as they're healthy, of course. So like cousins and stuff like that. All of our kids have biological cousins that live in town that we connect with quite regularly. I say every other month we connect with them. So like, that's pretty cool. I'm really excited about that part of their life, that they get that piece into it. My third tip here of how to help your, your adopted child adjust to a new life is honesty. I feel like this is super important. I don't like it when I, when people lie to their children. You, from the very beginning, we're really honest with our children about how we became a family um, and how things happen to their biological parents. If they ask, we will explain to them those things not in a mean way, but we will explain to them because it's really important for them to know what's going on and not to keep them in the dark all the time. Um, we probably overshare with our children in some people's eyes, but I, I feel like it's really valuable for them to be in the loop about what's going on in their life because essentially this is their life. This is their biological mother and father that they're um, dealing with here. And so also if you adopted from overseas, I don't think people do this anymore, but if you adopted a baby, like you should be telling your child that they were adopted from as early as they can understand so that they understand who they are and where they came from identity again is a huge deal and and so honesty really plays a huge role in all of this um, if they're dealing with emotions and dealing with hard times um, we try to keep an open relationship like where they can explain to me how they're feeling and I can explain to me how I'm them how I'm feeling so that we can have a good relationship that teaches kids how to be powerful people and that's what we're what we're trying to go for right we're trying to raise them to be powerful adults so we love honesty in our household that's something that we do number four is give yourself a break i don't know how much i can stress this um remind yourself as to why you're doing this thing why are you adopting a child why are you a foster parent to begin with um, take a taking a break from your kids to be better parent is so essential and even to like have a time where you're away with your spouse 
is super important too so that you can refuel and you can be healthy so you're not snapping at your kids and not screaming at them you know like it just it's parenting sometimes it gets hard and we're humans and we can't like put that on ourselves we are dealing with human motives ourselves and so we want to make sure that we're healthy so that we can be the healthiest best people for our children they need to see us as strong people that really love and care for them and that's only happens if we're healthy and not not worn out and a wreck all the time my number five tip is to is jesus like honestly i don't know what i would do um to help my children more than to love god and to give them god like it's really important to to us and our family especially we like talk to god about our children all the time and we ask him for advice and for wise counsel from his word and it's very important to our family that we consult God on all things because he is the one with all wisdom and all truth and he can help us through any situation. I don't know how many times we have been in a very dark season of our family and I just, I prayed about it or I, or I prayed for my child and God gave me wisdom or he fixed the situation and it just diminished. Like the, it's it's miraculous and it's like one of my, my biggest weapons because um, we're not just dealing with flesh and blood, we're dealing with like powers and spiritual realm so like there's a whole spiritual realm out there um surrounding your children and we need to be in that spiritual realm with them fighting the battle for them and helping them to overcome and teaching them and giving them skills like my kids they're like afraid of the dark um we give them the tools they need we say okay so when you're scared what do you do you you call out to jesus you use your tools you know you start praying you sing you sing a worship song um you you do what you need to do to um become a victorious in that area of fear in your life and that helps them in all areas and so like, giving them a strong faith is super important so that is something that's really helpful in helping your child adjust and my last tip here number five is love i know that like oh like okay so when i was in foster care training um they would say stuff like love isn't all you give to a child to help them succeed because like they feel like when foster parents come into the class like all they think is love will fix all problems but like in reality like when you like nurture and you love and you care for a child like that will just bring so much healing to them it will bring trust into your relationship it will bring peace into your home and it will fix a lot of problems i mean it won't fix everything i know we still need discipline discipline and we still need like routine and all these things but like love is like the solid thing that we need to use to parent our kids and like i said like we need to remind ourselves regularly like why are we in this thing why am i a parent how come do i yell and snap at my kids what's my motive behind that how can i love them better what is something that i can do to love them better what is something i can do to love them better one of my favorite things to do is to figure out what my kids love language is and love them in that way i don't know if you guys ever heard of the five love languages it's pretty popular um there is um different ways that you can love on people and they can receive love better so there's like acts of service there's words of affirmation, there's gifts, there's quality time, and physical touch. I was like trying to figure out the last one. And all of my kids have different love language and how they like to spend time with me. And um, it's interesting how in the beginning, like let's take physical affection. In the beginning when they move in, they don't know how to express physical affection. So they might just like smack you or like hit you or like squeeze you because they want physical they want to express physical love to you but they don't know how they've never fully been taught what's appropriate to show love for like to love for you for and so you have to teach them how to love and you give them those tools um through loving them in that way like when you want to give mom attention you want to give her a hug or you give I give you a hug and that's how you teach them how to love it's it's a beautiful thing so we learn how to love from our parents actually and that's sometimes how we it's our worldview lens sometimes how our mom and dad loved us is how we view god and we view others and it just kind of makes like a worldview event lens for us so we want to make sure that we instill that into our children um, from as, as young as age as we can especially if they're from foster care or they're adopted so those are my five tips for you guys on how to help your foster child or adopted child become better adjusted. I hope you guys enjoyed them. If you have any 
better tips, I would love for you to put them in the comments below. And I hope you guys are having the best day ever and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.